got to be careful about fund managers doubling down on tech like never before. That happened in a much more significant <laughs> way a couple of decades ago. But it's been quite remarkable, the gains of these four companies and their contribution to the overall index. What is right. behind that? Right. Well, every quarter we keep seeing fund managers making new records on how much they own. So it's relative to the benchmarks of so saying doubling down. You know, don't want to hyperbolize it too much, but it is yeah. a record. 71% uh, owning of the FANG stocks. Uh, this is from Bank of America data. Then they also stretch out FANG and put a couple extra A's in there and include Adobe and Broadcom, which ticker AVGO makes it another A in the FANG. Um, but yeah, so we have, again, four or five stocks really leading the benchmark here. It isn't actually too too unusual that we have this. Um, Cliff Asness, for example, has a really good study. He called it uh, all fanged up, kind of fun. Uh, and it essentially looked that saying, look, having a couple stocks leading the benchmarks isn't really unusual. Um, I think what might sort of get into the realm of unusual is when you have them leading it and then valuations keep getting stretched, a market that's not moving much, uh, fund managers crowding into those names. So there are sort of extra nerves built in there along with just the fact that they're leading the market right now. Now. Not unusual, but coming into a year when we were told there's going to be an earnings recovery, the data is going to get better, we might get some action from Washington DC as well that would boost equities. It is rather unusual that the breadth of the gains isn't there in the way that many people anticipated. Absolutely. I mean, you're spot on. Look, in, in the beginning when Trump was elected, even before we had this reflationary trade where value stocks, cheaper stocks were doing very well, uh, it was almost three phases before Trump was elected and after he was elected through the new year, you had this really resurgence of the value trade and then you had growth catch up and now we're sort of in this third phase where value is now starting to lag and you have growth taking off. So that completely fits this picture you're saying where where all of a sudden it's not the economic recovery that's leading the stocks right now. Are the earnings keeping up to justify these valuations or is it becoming really overbought? Is it getting dangerous? Uh, it it kind of depends on where you look, but in order for earnings to keep up with where valuations are going, we would really have to see some growth we wouldn't we haven't seen in quite a while, uh, over a decade essentially. So it is possible, but it is starting to get stretched by a lot of measures. It is quite overbought at the moment. And I just want to point out, talking about tech, we saw tech outflow from the Spider ETF mm. that tracks technology shares. That doesn't make sense. When you have all this record highs and say Google and Apple and Amazon, then you have a uh, retail sort of tech outflow. How do you square those two? Is that profit taken? Right, yeah. So it's uh, 716 uh, million last week, which again was the most in over a year. Uh, profit taking seems like the most logical response here. Uh, uh, the the ETF XLK it is a big one, so sometimes these uh, flows have a tricky way of reversing very quickly. But I think it is significant that we had these record outflows again, the most in over a year at a time when valuations are reaching peak. When you have Google and Amazon trade trading near a thousand dollars, it does seem to be some uh, profit taking. And then on the flip side, we have other investors, fund managers uh, covering shorts boosting their exposure.